So Chrissy, tell, tell me about, uh, I guess we should start with your childhood, right? Let's, let's hear, like, how did your life start? What, what, what were your earliest memories? Um, well, um, my earliest memories were when I was four years old, and I lived with my mom and my dad and my little brother, um, and I remember feeling like our family was like, you know, it was like a safe place, it was perfect, and I mean, I didn't really have anything to it to but I was I was happy mm -hmm. and I remember being happy um, and um, but there is also other things going on in my life that um, kind of you know things changed my dad um, he liked to preach like even if he didn't have church he's still preaching um, so he raised us um, you know, with the Bible and teaching us the Bible, and we went to church, um, and my mom sang in the choir, and so it was kind of what our life was like, you know, when I was four years old. Um, but then there was a side of my dad that was that was abusive. Um, he never abused me physically or my well. He did actually. He did it. He did it with my brother, but. Um, also, um, you know, it was confusing because he, he preaches and teaches us one thing and then he, you know, does a, you know, just... Some behaviors that contradict yes, exactly. who he is. Yeah, so, um, you know, and one of the things that he would tell me is that, and it, I mean, I was only four years old, he said, um, he would say, if anybody ever touches you, let me know and I'll kill them. Nobody's going to touch my daughter. You know, he would go off on this tangent. And at four years old, I, I didn't know what that meant, um, but it scared me. So sure. um, when I was four years old, it was also the first time I was um, molested by a neighbor. And I didn't tell anybody because <laughs> thinking that my dad's going to kill somebody is terrifying That's, for a kid yeah it wasn't like a safe place to go and talk it talk it out so I didn't tell anybody um, after around the age what was it like 11 ish um, my parents uh, we we moved around a lot but we were living um, in a in this house um, and we had we moved in with another person because he was he was ill, so we moved in with him, and... Where, where did you grow up? What? Where, where did you grow up? Oh, I grew up in Jacksonville, oh, Florida. Florida? Mm hmm So, anyway, so we moved to this new place. My dad started drinking. I mean, if he was drinking before age 11, I didn't really know. Um, he did go out a lot. But during this time, I remember... coming home and he and his friend were like working on a car outside and I saw a beer and I remember it scared me. I don't, I don't know why, but I was like, oh, that's wrong. And it scared me. Um, but then, because I started noticing my dad's behavior being different and he's being more um, fighting with my mom more and stuff like that. and. Um, I don't know, it just kind of really scared me. Um, but also, with during that time, he had a lot of friends that he would bring, or that would come in his, to our home, or um, we had neighbors that we would go over their house and they had a bonfire going. So, and the, all of them drink beer. So the, I was exposed to a lot of drunk men and my dad. And, um, I don't know, it, let me say, I noticed during that time in my life that men were looking at me, these drunk men that were adults, were looking at me in a different kind of way, and I guess because I was, you know, getting older, and, um, a lot of times they would tell me I'm pretty, or, you know, it was just, they were kind of weird. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and so I picked up on that, 
Um, they also did it with, did that to my mom, and um, my mom was so beautiful and young, and my dad, um, his friends would hit on her, and then he would get mad and he would take it out on her, so it was a very um, unhealthy relationship. And also, um, whenever my dad, um, would, they, we would have a bonfire. I remember one time in particular, he was drunk, he got on the fire, because he did stuff like that. And he's like, my daughter is a virgin. It was something like, she's, I don't know. I don't even know exactly what he said, but he was talking about me, me being a virgin. And he did that quite often. My mom would always make him shut up, but this particular time, I don't even think she was around. But it was so embarrassing, I didn't really understand it. And at the same time, we had, we had um, there was this, little, this boy that was his, his um, my dad's friend, his son was mol molesting me during this time, mm. all the time. I would have to fight him off or kick him, you know, <laughs> really hard um, to get away from him. My brother, my little brother, he's two years younger than me. He would do the same thing. He would fight him off of me. But um, I mean, this kid. He knew a lot about sex, and his dad was abusive, uh, very physically abusive, because I saw, saw it. Um, and um, so I didn't want to tell on him because I, I knew that he would get beat, so I didn't. And but he was just he, it was. We lived there for maybe a year, and that was how long I had to deal with that. Um, but then also, like, in school, like, I don't know why, but these kids are always were drawn to me. And when things like that would happen, I'd freeze. So I had, um, even in, like, first grade, I had a, a kid throw me on the ground and try to have, like, I don't know what, he wasn't having sex with me, but I, we had our clothes on. But it was just, how do kids even know that, that kind of stuff? I don't know. Um... So I kind of grew up with that and the secret that I couldn't really tell anybody. And I felt, I felt like I was doing something wrong. I felt dirty. I felt embarrassed. I felt ashamed. I felt angry. Um, and so that happened throughout my childhood. Um, then in my teen years, my parents had Split, split up, and my dad um, took us away from our my mom, and we moved to a different city. He kind of basically kidnapped us, um, and it took a few days, and then he let, me, let us call my mom. And then they tried to work it out, and so he would... Um, so your dad, what do you mean your dad kidnapped you? Just, Basically, yeah, my dad and my mom had a really bad fight. My dad was jealous because my mom left the Christmas party with his friend um, to get dropped off at our home, and he went off the deep end. And, um, you know, this is back when kids could stay home alone. <laughs> so we were sleeping, right. and um, they came home fighting, and it was the scariest fight I think I've ever heard. Um, at that point, they would fight a lot, actually. During this time, you know, that night, my mom finally got, um, well, when they would fight, she would take me and my brother and leave the house and go to her, go to my grandma's. Um, but this time, he threatened to kill her if she, if she took us. So, um, so she left without us, which was the first time that ever happened. She always would protect us. Um, and then my dad, he, he gave us each a trash bag and said, put whatever you want, want to take in the bag. And we didn't know where we were going. Um, but we did that. We threw it in the back of the truck and he drove us away to New City, um, basically kind of kidnapping us. We couldn't call our mom for a few days. Um, but eventually we did. Biggest dream in life. I didn't have like a certain career. I just wanted to get married and have a baby. When I was 17, I um, 
really started having like a serious boyfriend. I thought this was my going to be my husband. So he got me pregnant. I didn't care if I didn't finish high school. I was going to, I don't know. I just had this like, I guess kind of like a fairy tale like expectations. But he said he wasn't going to marry me and I ended up not being able to have the baby. I ended up going to the clinic and having an abortion. I already had so much trauma in my life that this was just like the worst thing that could ever happen. That pushed me over the edge. When I started high school my senior year, I didn't care about anything. I was more rebellious than ever. I was severely depressed. I had zero drive and I almost didn't graduate high school. Yeah, I just started like, living with a couple of roommates and then I had a boyfriend, very unhealthy relationship. We lived together for a little while and then we broke up. Then I had to move back home and then I lived with somebody else and then broke up and then I had to move back home again. <laughs> and I would go on dating websites, email people and um, try to find somebody to marry me. <laughs> <laughs> basically because I wanted to get married that was my biggest dream my mission was to find my husband and I would go to different states to meet people that wasn't a good idea I was raped I was roofied I was all kinds of really bad things you know I would tell tell my mom about it um, she was like I don't think that's a good idea Christina I'm gonna do it anyway but what in my heart like what I really wanted to hear was I love you and I want I want you to be safe and I don't think it's a good idea you know I wanted to hear that but I just heard that it wasn't a good idea so I'm just like nobody nobody cares so I was very careless and all these bad things happened and I didn't find my husband well anyway I like this guy and I met him actually um, at a bar where he was playing pool and we moved in together and lived together for about a year. Um, I got engaged to him, um, but there was a problem in that he wasn't able to express his emotions. He wasn't able to say, I love you. There were some weird things happening with ex-girlfriends of his coming to our home and stuff. So I broke up with him and then I moved back home again. I ended up meeting somebody else right away, but I didn't move in with him. He broke up with me. It was like a rock bottom, you know. I had a lot of rock bottoms. So this was like one of them. It, I was devastated. I really liked this guy. And I don't know why. I don't know why I really liked him, but I did. And so I got back on the internet, started trying to meet people again. And I had a really good job and I made decent money. Um, and I was only going up because I was about, I was one of the people in this office that was up for our office manager. And it was a big office and a lot of people in there. And um, I kind of screwed it up because I kept getting online. And, um, and then people started emailing me about doing, well, I found a modeling website. And the people who were posting on it weren't models. You know, they were just regular people. Um, I'm not saying they're not attractive, but not like the typical like magazine fashion models. And so I was like, hmm, they're getting work. I wonder if I could try that and see what happens. And I just, I didn't think I would ever have anybody want to hire me, but immediately after I put my portfolio up there, I had people um, sending me emails to um, do porn. And I, I was, I don't know, it, it wasn't flattering to me because when I thought of porn, that was like, to me at that time, and I did, all the guys that li um, had lived with up to that point watched porn while we lived together. Um, and I didn't like it. I didn't like feeling like I had to compete with anybody um, to, to get loved, to earn love from the person and so I felt like there was a standard I could never live up to. So that was really hard for me and um, so when people were emailing me asking me did you what I was like no I'm not gonna why would I do that I'm like I'll model in a bathing suit but that's it um, but then you know when this breakup happened it's something I couldn't get out of bed to go to work I almost lost my job um, but I didn't really have, I didn't really care about my life anymore. Um, so, so yeah, so I started, um, so it took a little while. I ended up meeting, um, a photographer, um, that shot 
Playboy models. And this was different than porn because the girls are really beautiful. They're airbrushed. Um, you know, they're showing stuff, but they're not like, you know, not, not showing everything. <laughs> And so I was thinking, hmm, I wonder. He's like, I want to submit you for Playboy. And I was like, oh, he thinks I can do that. So that was flattering to me. That made me feel like I was worth something. And, you know, all these other people don't see me as anything but this person who shoots these kind of girls. He wants to shoot me. And so I gave in. And so that was my first shoot. I went, um, I met him. At a hotel, um, I, I don't know, I was so brave. I guess I wasn't really brave, I just didn't care. And so I was like, well, if something happens, who cares? If something happens to me, I'll be out of this world. <laughs> and I was so, like, my life was very sad. Um, so I went there um, the first night that we were there. We shot some photos um, in the room. He had told me to bring lingerie, so I brought that. And so the, I remember the first um, shot, the first shoot that we did, um, he's like, stand on that side of the bed and I want you. Um, he, he told me where to put my hands and what to do. And at first it was kind of, it was really weird. It was very awkward. But at first it was really scary. Um, but then when he said, take your top off, that was like the scary, scary part. And I remember feeling, this isn't a good idea. But this person traveled to meet me in this hotel. I owe it to him to do the shoot. So I, I went through with it. I had certain um, um, boundaries, what I would do and what I wouldn't do. But then he shot me the next day and he, talked to me into doing more than what I wanted to do. So that happened after that shoot. I got, I was not right in my head. I was just kind of like, um, what did I just do? Like, then I saw the pictures and it was really strange because I never seen myself like that and I didn't like it. And I'm like, I'm not gonna ever do that again. Um, but I ended up doing that again. Uh, in between online dating and I would uh, do these shoots. Um, I didn't do a lot, but after maybe my third shoot with like maybe three different photographers, I ended up meeting um, this one photographer I was shooting with. Um, they, they were in LA and they booked me and I was shooting in a mansion. This huge house with a spiral staircase and it's marble everywhere. And they have a makeup person, a hair person, and all these things that um, I had never seen before in my life. And, um, and they were gonna pay me a lot of money. Um, and it wasn't gonna be, it wasn't gonna be showing everything. It was just gonna be like um, Playboy style. So when I was shooting with them, I ended up not sticking to my boundaries again. Um, out of feeling of obligation, they, they pay, they're paying me, they flew me here, I owe it to them. I think that's kind of like my attitude throughout my life was kind of like I owe them. Um, so the shoot was kind of exciting in a way until you had to start taking off clothes and then I would, I, I learned, you know, growing up being molested that you can mentally just check out. So I would check out, I would dissociate. It was as if I'm thinking of myself as being a piece of art and I'm looking down on myself to see how the camera is seeing me and to make eye contact with the camera. Like, it was weird, um, but I wasn't me. I was somebody else and that's the only way I could do it. Um, but then, you know, I got paid but most of the time the money, that was like secondary. What I really wanted was acceptance and love and just to know that I mattered to somebody in some, any kind of way. Um, and that's what being in the industry gave me. So I was shooting with these people. Um, this man showed up that they knew and he was a um, manager. He managed different girls. Um, his girls were 
did the softer stuff that wasn't like hardcore porn and they were pretty and a lot of them only did like playboy style things and um and he wanted to represent me and i was kind of flattered because the girls he shot were really pretty um so uh, so I ended up uh, working with him and i lost my job because i kept getting on the internet and there were times where I couldn't show up to work because of <laughs> I was either doing a photo shoot or I was depressed or I was a real mess. Um, so I ended up losing my job and then I um, started my own website and I was um, dating a guy where we were living together because every guy that I dated, we moved in together because <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> I just wanted to get married and have a baby. So we um, lived together uh, for about a year. And um, when he, okay, so this, this person, he had porn magazines. And they were of women with breasts, like huge, like bigger than their head each it was it was well to me it was weird <laughs> i don't know i um it was a fetish pretty much it wasn't just normal they were like i can't even i won't go into it <laughs> try not to go into it but um he had these magazines and i didn't look like that at all so um yeah so it was kind of weird to me um i didn't like it even though i was doing my own website and shooting but this was not gonna be my husband. Like he shouldn't be looking at, you know, if he if he's flattered that I'm doing it, like I didn't want him looking at other women. Um, I just couldn't give in to that. That was hard for me. But we ended up um, having a really bad fight, and he started packing my stuff up in my car, and I was like, if you keep putting my stuff in my car, I'm gonna leave and I'm never gonna come back. And I was still living in Jacksonville. Um, so he wouldn't stop packing out my car so i had to follow through so i got my car and i just start i just drove i didn't know i didn't have a map or any i mean i had a paper map but i didn't have like a cell phone with a map on it to tell me where i'm going so i just got on the road and started driving and then i realized oh i'm in tampa i know somebody who lives there i knew two people who live there and i was tired <laughs> so i called one of them I went and stayed at his house. It was another, um, it was a guy who was like a model or whatever. So I stayed with him. I didn't really like him. He got on my nerves. Um, so I called the photographer that lived out there that had shot me before and told him I was there. Um, and it, I don't remember how exactly it went down, but um, I ended up moving in with him right yeah. away. Like I didn't have to stay by myself and I didn't ever want to be by myself. That was too scary for me. So I moved with him, in with him. He was a, a webmaster. He shot um, his ex-wife, she had her website. Um, he had shot me and then he took over my website um, and took it to the next level. And um, yeah, I was severely depressed in that relationship. I really never really left my bedroom unless I needed to eat. Um, and he was okay just letting me not do anything. But he would shoot me and he would push my boundaries. And he got me doing things that I, I you know, going even further with things. Um, and it was, a, it was a weird relationship. He was the same age as my mom. And he was a lot older than me, and um, we never told each other that we loved each other, but we were a couple. It was very strange. But after about a year, year and a half of living with him, um, I ended up, um, well, he broke up with me. I wasn't shooting a lot of stuff, except for, for my website, because that was my main income. So because my website, was was good and I made a lot of money that meant that I didn't have to shoot every week or two weeks or whatever I could just do what I wanted to do um, but it wasn't making a lot of money so 
um, I wasn't always able to, well, I did pay my rent, but there was, um, you know, sometimes where it was really hard to pay my rent. And one time I had to do a contest that <laughs> I, I heard about on the radio, and it was like hot legs contest. <laughs> and if you knew me, this is not something I would do. It was really dumb, and it was, I, I won. But it was 500 bucks, that was my rent. And it was so gross, <laughs> it was so weird. I don't even know what I did. But, so, I got to pay my rent that time and I got back on the dating websites. And then I ended up meeting somebody that I didn't like. Well, I met his friend, I met a friend, um, and then I met him, I was supposed to date his friend, but they, he took me to, introduce me to his friend, and they ended up raping me. And, um, I went back to my ex-boyfriend, told him what happened. He's like, do you think that he would want to shoot for my website? Like, you shoot you two together? And I was like, did he just hear me? Like, I'm crying. I've been raped, and I'm devastated. And he's asking me that. And I'm just, I felt so alone and unloved. And I didn't have a relationship with my family uh, at all. Nothing. So I was like, I'm never gonna hang out with those guys again. And you know, maybe three weeks went by and I'm by myself and I'm meeting guys, they're coming to my apartment and I'm feeling obligated to be with them even if I didn't like them because they took the time. I don't know, it's just this weird thing that I had. And I guess kind of being with somebody in any kind of way was better than being by myself. Um, that was the worst thing to me. I didn't have friends or anybody. So, um, well, you, you had a long string of boyfriends though. Yes. I have had lots of boyfriends or hookups or whatever. Um, all of it. Um, you know, I thought, I, I thought that in order to get a boyfriend, you have to be this certain kind of girl and you have to definitely have sex with them or they're not going to move you in <laughs> like you have to give something um and the like the men what do they like they want you know a feminine girl who's hot and sexy and like a porn girl and all these things so i was um i, I never felt like i was good enough like it, i always need to change something because this person is into this or you know sexually or looks wise or you know, stuff like that, and yeah, so I w didn't want to see that, you know, I didn't want to see the guy I went on the date with, I didn't want to see the guy that he introduced me to, but there was one night in particular, I was alone, and I was sad, and I was depressed, and I was wanting to kill myself, and they contacted me, well, the one that I went on the date with, contacted me to hang out at some club, and I was just like, okay, whatever, like, it's better than being by myself, and I, maybe, you know, this isn't, they raped me, but I've been raped before, so who cares, so, um, this is so weird to, like, even hear myself saying, because I'm so different now than I was, then. it was very sad, um, so we hung out that night, and I ended up hanging out with the friend, the friend, the guy's friend, and, um, yeah, so after that, I moved in with him. And <laughs> the guy who raped me, I moved in with him. He took over my porn career. Um, he started getting me contracts with other people. He started shooting photos of me and other people together. He started like taking over my whole business. And we were together for three and a half years. Um, of the time I was in the industry, and a lot of people didn't know that he was abusive. He was physically abusive, verbally abusive. He was terrifying to me. Um, and I was very isolated. So we ended up moving from Florida together to California. And um, it was a bad relationship. There was drugs. Um, I tried almost every drug there is. Um, thank God I didn't get addicted. That's just like a miracle. 
Um, but he was definitely addicted to, to everything and anything. It didn't matter if it was sex or drugs or, or you know, other women. He, he, he cheated on me, but I didn't have proof. It was one of those things where they make you feel crazy. But I knew it in my heart, but I couldn't prove it. Um, he lived, he lived a crazy lifestyle that was outside of our relationship. He had a working relationship with somebody um, who, I don't know if I want to go into all that, but they paid him for what he did mm. with them. Um, and it, it was with men and um, paid him a lot of money. He got a new car, he, but he was never home. Um, his, ro his roommate, um, I lived with him in, in our home and he would come home sometimes, but most of the time he was out making his money. Um, and he had a manager too, aside from this one person, he had a regular talent manager and he had worked in the porn industry before I ever did, but he was out of it and he was just doing his escorting stuff. So, and um, I was so naive to think that he wasn't actually having sex and he's not actually going to shoot a movie. I, I really didn't have proof of these things until we broke up. And then I saw he was doing movies, he was doing all kinds of stuff. Um, so, three and a half years, abuse, um, drugs, all the bad things, doing porn, feeling empty, feeling afraid to be by myself, that it is better to be abused than to be alone. Um, and that at least I could just go in another room and do some drugs and, and tune out everything. And when he was high, he was not, he was actually kind of nice or funny, but when he wasn't, oh my gosh, he was scary. He was a huge guy with big, just big muscles and, you know, he could easily take me down and he did. And he would say that he was always going to put me six feet under. That was like his phrase that he, he would use for me. And, okay, so I never thought I would be in a relationship with somebody that was so much like my dad. And I said, that would never happen. But I feel like my life had broke me down so much. All these things that I had zero self-worth. And, and there was a part of me that wanted him to kill me. And that's... No, oh, that's terrible to say, but it's true. Um, yeah, so we broke up, and then um, I went back to online dating. I don't know what my problem was. I didn't learn. I never learned. Um, and then I ended up meeting a really nice guy. So my last year of being in the porn industry, I met this guy, um, and he was nice. He was had a son, so it was like I would be an instant mom. I didn't have to have, I didn't have to birth a child. I would be a mom and a wife. Um, and he was, he's not into the porn industry or anything. He was a, a mainstream actor. Um, um, so during this time, like we spent 24 seven together all the time, every day, all day. We, we had our routine. We would go and hike, then we would eat breakfast, then we would go home and, you know, everything was every day. We didn't really spend any time apart. Um, and we were together for a year and a half. So at the end of our relationship, he went on a little trip um, and he was being filmed because he was an actor. He was being filmed for a mainstream show, not a porn thing. Um, and and um, before he left, I felt really insecure and I said, because he wasn't taking me, and I said, please don't go to any strip clubs. And I, I don't know, I just felt like if he's gonna get away from me, he's gonna do something bad. So I said that to him. He's like, oh, I wouldn't do that. So um, after he got out there, he called me one, the one night really, really, really late and it was, like after 2 a.m. And I asked him where he was. He was slurring, he was drunk. And he said, um, 
oh, I met P.F. Chang's. I'm like, it's too late to be a P.F. Chang's. Like, that's not where you're at. I hear music. And he, he, you know, was drunk, so he tried to convince me. And then um, I didn't get, he swore to me that he wasn't at a strip club. Um, and I knew, I just knew it. I just knew it. That day, that night, I could, I could barely sleep. Um, the next day he called me and, he, and um, I got him to admit that that's where he went. And that's where he did. He went to a strip club. And I was devastated. I, I was like, I thought this guy, he's the nice guy. He wasn't abusing me. But he went to a strip club. He had time on his own and that's what he did. And I was at the peak of my porn career, if you want to call it that. I was making a lot of money, a lot of money. I, I was just at the top and I still wasn't enough. And that's what was really hard for me to grasp is that at this point, I would, everything on me was fake. <laughs> I had hair extensions, which there's nothing wrong with that. But that, that was part of my identity. I had to have the hair. I had to have the nails. <laughs> I had to have the tan. I had to have all of these things. These were who I was. That was my identity. Everything was wrapped around people wanting to pay me to do stuff or to like to pay me to shoot for their magazine or this or that. And that was giving me my worth. And or that people desired me or that I had fans that would email me and say that somehow I make their life more complete. Like all these things were my identity. And so and and I worked so hard to be in shape, like all of these things. And then my boyfriend, who I thought I was gonna marry, who was the good guy, went to a strip club. <laughs> and it sounds so silly because I'm doing porn, mm -hmm. but my expectations were different and I felt like I knew that the man that I was gonna marry was not gonna do that. He's not even gonna be tempted to do that. He's gonna be focused on me and only me and I'm gonna be, you know, I don't know, I'm gonna be loved. So him going to the club, I knew that he didn't really love me. He admitted that he lied to me and I was devastated. I hung up the phone and I cried. I, I like sat on the floor in my kitchen. I'm like, God, like if you're real, because I grew up believing in God, but where was he? If you're real, I need to know it and I need a sign. Like, I've lost all hope. Everything I know about love is twisted and perverted and I don't even know if I believe in it anymore, you know? So I was like, God, just please give me a sign. Give me a sign. And so, <sighs> so the next day, um, that night, I made a list of pros and cons because I'm like, I'm not thinking clearly. And I never really did that before. So I'm like, why should I stay and why should I leave? I made this list. <laughs> the leave list was a lot longer. And that gave me some clarity. I flew out to where he was filming um, to be with him. And when I got there, I didn't love him anymore. Mm. It was like, those feelings were gone. I didn't even like him anymore. And um, so anyway, I went out there. And... Um, he was introducing me to people that were um, working on the film or that were in the movie. And I met this guy named, this guy, I met this guy and um, he, he was really, I mean, everybody on set was nice. But um, when my boyfriend was shooting, he got me um, to have a conversation with him and he asked me what I did for a living. And I said, oh, I'm a model. Like, what kind of modeling do you do? I'm like, you know, like the the car magazines, like the model, you know, that's what I do. And um, he, he didn't believe me. He kept asking me more questions to get me to admit it. And so finally, I was just like, I do adult stuff, like porn. And he was like, yeah, I, um, I already knew that. Your boyfriend is here. He's been showing people your photos. And, and um, you know, in our personal life, we didn't have a lot of friends, but we didn't go around saying, introducing me or talking about me doing porn. Um, so I felt really 
I'm comfortable that everybody I just talked to knew. They know what I look like that way. And um, I felt really exposed, like really exposed. Um, but then he said, he asked me, he's like, um, let me ask you something, Chrissy, do you believe in God? And I was like, okay, I asked God for a sign. Nobody has talked to me about God in a really, really long time. So I knew that God was sending him as a sign. And I said, yes, I do. And he said, well, um, you don't have to, you know, you don't have to live this kind of lifestyle. You can be free. You can break free and have a new life. And, you know, do you believe that? And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know what I believe, you know, but there was this hope because God sent me a sign. And so he, he was like, um, you know, do you want to go outside and pray with me? And so I prayed. And at that time I, um, made a decision that I was never going to go back to that boyfriend and then I was going to leave and I was going to quit the industry. It only took that one person who was brave. Um, and I say he's brave because everybody that found out about it on set were trying to jump him throughout the rest of the film. He was very bold and brave and he, he, I don't know, he reached out to me and that's all it took. And and um, they thought I was gonna leave my boyfriend for him, but that wasn't, that was not what was happening. So that day, that night, my boyfriend, you know, he was working, he came into our hotel, and he's like, so, um, you know, we're gonna, we're getting ready for bed. I'm like, I can't sleep with you. And he's like, why? And I'm like, because I just like made a decision to change my life, I can't be in bed with you. And he laughed and he's like, you know, like if you're leaving porn, how are you gonna make a living? Like, how are you gonna pay your rent? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know, but I know that God sent me a sign that he's gonna take care of me. So, moved back home. Um, he was still working on the film. Moved all my stuff out before he even got there. My friend Chris introduced me to people in LA that um, helped me move my stuff. And these guys were like total gentlemen. Um, so nice and so kind. I moved into my own apartment. I was gone before he ever came home and I never saw him again. Um, and then the life change. Now, I'm not taking any money from porn. They're still making money off me indefinitely for all the model releases that I signed. I have no control over any of it, even my website. So I told the people who were running my website because that was my main income that, um, that I'm, I'm leaving, well, I told my fans first that I was leaving and then they found out from, my, from me exposing it to the fans that I was leaving and um, talked to my webmaster and he said, Chrissy, um, if you told me, if you would have told me that you were leaving the industry for to have a family, I may have let you out of your contract, but I'm not gonna do that but, um, um, for a fantasy like God. And I was just like, oh my gosh, like how, I don't know, I couldn't understand it. Like, because for me, my faith was, all, it, um, for me, my faith was um, strong. And, and it, like from my childhood to, to that point, it connected and I felt like God loved me and I couldn't understand, I couldn't understand it. Um, so anyway, so I said, he's like, where are you missing your check? I'm like, I don't want the check. So from that point on, I never got another check from my website, which was my main income. I went from making at least $15,000 a month to making um, nothing. And, and I didn't know what was gonna happen. And a lot of times people are like, well, what are you gonna do? Um, you know, have something in place for when you do leave. I didn't have anything and I knew, I knew that it was okay. And I knew, I, I felt like God had told me that, um, that he was gonna take care of me and to give everything up. This is what he told me. It might not be the same for everybody, but he told me to give everything up and take a stand and be bold and sh let me show you 
how much I love you and how I'm going to take care of you. And so through that process of losing everything, gaining weight, like all these things, my I couldn't pay for my hair or my tan or my nails. Um, and my whole identity was stripped. And now I'm me, me with short hair and I don't know, just not who, not the fantasy anymore. And I had to figure out who I really was without all of those things. And I didn't know, it was scary. I had anxiety, I had depression, I had PTSD. I was not well, but I had hope. <laughs> and like, it's crazy, all of the unknowns, um, God was showing me. Like I didn't have my rent. He would put somebody in my life randomly, like I'm gonna pay your rent. <laughs> I didn't have, you know, food. People would give me food. And I wasn't profiting at all. I was barely getting by. But each little thing was like, was like, God's giving me a hug. You know, it's like, I'm gonna take care of you. I'm gonna take care of you. This is, and I knew that it was all him. I knew it. Because it's, it was almost miraculous, like, how things happened. And yeah, so from, just that moment of that guy talking to me, everything changed. And um, how many years ago was that? <laughs> um, let's see, that happened in 2006. Okay. So it's been a long time. What, like 14 years? Thir 13 years. 13 years. 14. So it's been a really long time, and so much has happened from that moment into now. And um, now. I, I've been married for six years. I found my husband who has not even looked at my porn and is not interested. Um, he has proved to me that I could trust him because he was, um, he had his own story. He was, um, you know, alone for 10 years without dating or being with a woman. And so I'm like, this is the kind of guy I can trust. And I still trust him. And we have a very good relationship, very good marriage. Um, I'm, my PTSD was really bad before we got married. At some point, it disappeared. I don't even know how. I don't get jealous. I'm not insecure. Um, just everything is different. It's just different. And, and I just knew, uh, I just... I knew from the moment we started talking that he was going to be my husband just because he treated me so different than anybody ever had with respect. He wouldn't, um, when we met, we met kind of online, um, not like a dating website. We have a mutual, like real life friend. And um, when we met in person, he was so, um, what's the word? Uh, walking the straight and narrow. <laughs> Like I would um, try, I would like, you know, try to like link my arm through his, just like as we're walking through this little garden, he would be like, Chrissy, stop touching me. You can't do that. We're just friends. <laughs> and then my, my feelings would get hurt. And I would be like, but that's just showing me he's gonna be my husband. Cause God told me that the guy who's gonna marry me, um, he's gonna have a cool last name. <laughs> that he's gonna not um, be tempted. I mean, he'll be tempted, he's not gonna follow through. And um, all these things that God told me that ended up happening. It, and so we, um, we were friends for a whole year. I went on a, a um, fast for men. Um, I wasn't dating or hanging out with men for a year. Um, but I talked to him on the phone, he was the only one. So you were, you were living in L.A. and he was where? He was in Houston. In Houston. Mm -hmm. But the whole year before we met, um, I was on a fast. I stopped talking. I had lots of guy friends, um, lots, that I wasn't trying to date. Um, because it's like I'm a Christian, the young adult Christian community, hang out in groups and stuff like that. And so I met a lot of friends. Um, but I stopped hanging out with any of them, even if there was no romantic thi romantic thing, and um, just started like really focusing on my relationship with God, and um, and then that's you know when, when I started talking to him on the phone, I decided to go on my fast, 
Um, but God told me that he could stay, you know, in my life because he's in Houston and he's doing Bible studies with me over the phone. So he's bringing me closer to God. He's not, you know, pulling me away. So, um, yeah, so, yeah, a whole year went by. Then we met in person um, in December, and then um, he wasn't interested in dating me. He wasn't the whole time. He um, knew that I wasn't dateable. <laughs> but, so what happened, I had a um, speaking engagement planned in Houston on Valentine's Day. Um, so we met in December. I didn't even know about the, the thing and I got an email and I had planned it a year ahead of time. And they were like, so, are, you know, here's your information for, for the shoot on Valentine's Day. I'm like, okay. Um, and then I realized it was in Houston on Valentine's Day and it was, <laughs> like, this is so funny. I, my future husband is there. So that day, um, he came to my speaking engagement, and um, it was at a college. And I had my little sticker, like, it says something about waiting, <laughs> waiting um, to have sex to you're married. I had it on my shirt. We went to his house, and then he asked me to be his Valentine um, after that my speaking engagement. And yeah, that's from there, we just dated a little bit, and then we got married. That's great. <laughs> and I moved to Houston to be with him and his family. And his family is amazing. They really are amazing. So what do you, what do you think helped ground you? I mean, it was, it was just the realization that... <laughs> helped ground me? That, I think that, it was my faith. And I think that my relationship with my husband proved to me that I could trust men because he was so rigid. Well, you, you had such a string of terrible relationships. But he was so rigid. And he, if I would send him a picture of me being sexy, he would get mad at me. Like, he, he was so opposite mm -hmm. of everybody else. Um, and, and I kind of knew in my heart, like, that's the kind of guy I'm going to marry. And it just, that's how it worked out. I ended up being with the guy that I could trust. Yeah. Because of his rigidness. But I also think you were ready for something more substantial than yeah I had I was learning about um, I was learning about how relationships really work how they they're supposed to work because everything I knew growing up so you met him at roughly what age I was how old was I 35 or 36 mm -hmm. yeah so, so. You, you were mature yeah a little, a little more mature than you were when you were in your 20s and yeah desperate for some connection yeah I was a lot I was a lot more mature and I've been you know taking like um, little classes and I started going to church a lot and learning like the model of marriage and how it works together and you know men want respect women want love just the model of a relationship that's healthy and all that all mm. that kind of stuff so I learned a lot and Thank, you know, thankfully, he had been out of his own pattern of life uh, for 10 years, and he had been working on himself. So by the time I met him, he was in a place that he could um, kind of lead me and lead me spiritually and um, grow together, you know, as Christians, believers together. And I trusted him, and I never trusted anybody in my whole life. And I trust him, and that was that's kind of what grounded me. Yeah, it's just had like finally not having to be somebody else and being seen for who I was, and being accepted and loved for it. That was yeah, that was the yeah. healing that healed me. The PTSD went away. <laughs> So, never thought that would happen. It was so bad, but yeah, I think marriage healed me. I think marriage gave me a lot of freedom too. I didn't have to, you know, always wear a mask. I didn't have to always have my makeup but, on. But marriage to the right person too. What? But marriage to the right person. Yes, to the right. Because you could, you probably could have been married five times. I could have been married like fifteen times. times. Right. <laughs> right. But. And yeah. they all would have ended up. Yeah. I in mean, train wrecks. 
Yeah, I mean, I'm really glad that I, I didn't get married sooner because it would have been, it would have been terrible. Yeah. I probably would have had so many husbands. Or if you had kids with those husbands, it would have been yes. terrible, so. Yeah, and my um, abusive ex-boyfriend, he, he got me pregnant all the time and then he would take me to get an abortion. Mm. I could have had several kids and uh, that makes me really sad. I don't like to think about it. What, what would you say to young women who are <clears throat> you know, going through similar, not necessarily so extreme, you know, who are not so extremely off, bay, off, off course, but just who are struggling with relationships, struggling with the similar things, mm -hmm. what, would you, what would you say to them? I would just, I would say, um, I would just want to, to tell them that they are worthy of love, that they matter, that um, just to hold on, wait, work on yourself, don't lose hope, and that, you know, one day the right person's going to come along. But you have to be the person, so you have to work on yourself, so you have to be the person that would attract the kind of man that you want. Like, what is this, you know? what you want, what kind of woman is he going to be attracted to? And that's what I had to do. That's why I had to really focus on growing and being, you know, a good, you know, not a good person, but just work on myself. Well, I, th I think you were, before that point, you were, you were attracting guys left and right, mm -hmm. but they were the wrong kind yeah. of guys. And I knew that, like, I want to be with a guy who is a leader that can lead our relationship. Not that he's, like, you know, over me. It's more like we work together, but he's stable. Yeah, but, but I think a lot of women can attract a lot of guys if they get, if they look a certain way, if they mm -hmm. act a certain way, if they behave a certain way. But you're at, you're you're attracting the wrong kind of guy. Yeah. Yeah, and my standards for men were very low. <laughs> yeah, right. I, so I think part of it is having <laughs> having having high standards, knowing the difference between guys that are worthless and guys that are worthwhile. And being patient and working on yourself yeah. to get there. Work on yourself. Be the woman that's going to attract the kind of guy that you want. And that, it's not easy. <laughs> like, no, having, having high standards is, is, yeah. is a tall order sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Excellent. Thank you for sharing your story. You're welcome. I'm glad it worked out so beautifully. Thanks. Great job. Thank you. Thank you, Chris.